Bottle 9. We are not afraid of you. You may think you're all pretty with your lights, bright ads, and fireworks, but you cannot scare us. We were put on this earth to image the beauty of outer space, and you will not stop us. More than 80% of the world's population lives in light polluted areas, where seeing the Milky Way is usually impossible. This is really sad because people who get into astronomy or astrophotography often get interested in the hobby because they love looking at the sky. How do you expect someone to get hooked about something they cannot see in the first place? Living in Las Vegas, we almost never got into astrophotography. Our home is very close to the Strip, which is one of the most light-polluted places that you can find on Earth, along with some other major cities that love billboard ads and extravagant lights. Lucky for us, we are able to escape this extreme light pollution by driving an hour or so towards nowhere in the desert. Some other people on the East Coast, for example, or in most areas of Europe, aren't so lucky. Have you ever taken a long exposure picture of the stars from your Voidal Line backyard? Although it makes sense to think that doing astrophotography from a city is a lost cause, that is not the case. Believe it or not, some of our favorite shots of all time were taken from our extremely light polluted backyard. In this video, we'll give you some tips on how to slap light pollution in the face and capture your favorite deep sky objects from the city. So this is the most obvious tip of all. Uh, if you can only image from the city, we really recommend that you set up some money and get a monochrome camera with some quality uh, filters. So this will really change your life, seriously. Yes, and sometimes people are afraid to upgrade to a monochrome camera, maybe because the learning curve is steep or because you'll have to image with different filters one at a time and this will be like triple the amount of time that you're imaging. Um, wrong. We know that the learning curve can be uh, intimidating but we made the jump from uh, DSLR camera straight to monochrome camera. And look, we're still alive. You can spend one hour with a color camera and one hour with a monochrome camera, doing 20 minutes at a time with each filter, and you'll still get a cleaner result with a monochrome camera. And it's worth noting that you'll only really need a monochrome camera if you're doing emission nebulae mostly. Yeah, so the power of monochrome cameras is mostly uh, the narrowband filters. So you use narrowband filters for emission nebulae uh, most of the time. You can also use that for uh, you know, some galaxies with some HA in it, but most of the time you don't want to use those filters for broadband targets like most galaxies or star clusters or even some nebulae like uh, reflection nebulae or um, dark nebulae because these narrowband filters will not work well for these targets. Right, and if you do get a monochrome camera, don't worry because there's plenty of emission nebulae out there. Okay, so what if all you have is a DSLR camera? So the biggest challenge here, aside from light pollution, is going to be noise. So there are two things you can do to kind of control your noise. Uh, one of them is don't choose a high ISO. So depending on your camera, this will uh, differ, but we recommend not going over uh, 400 to 800 if imaging from, uh, from home, for example, uh, because you will already have so much noise because of the light pollution. So you really want to get your ISO down, and even though your uh, images will look very dark on the screen, uh, this will uh, be fine when you stack a bunch of frames later on. That's right. So the goal here is to get the cleanest image possible. Now another thing that will affect your shots with the DSLR camera is ambient temperature. Now this isn't something that you can really control, but just avoid shooting on very hot nights. So we often get hot nights here in Las Vegas during the summertime, and it does affect our images. So here is an example of M74 taken on a very hot night. 
and then here it is again on a cooler night just a few weeks later. So another tip uh, for you guys if you're imaging from home is to invest in some good filters. So let's start off with narrowband filters. Uh, narrowband filters are once again the best when imaging from light pollution. Um, and so there are three of them, HA, S2 and O3. So if you're using a monochrome camera, you will have all three narrowband filters uh, in your filter wheel. So the HA filter is the absolute best uh, when imaging through light pollution. It will block out so much of the light pollution that you will get some really, really nice and clean images. So HA is the best and the easiest to use uh, from home. Um, then you have S2. So HA you can use from home even on a full moon night, unless you're very close to the moon. Uh, S2 is also good. Uh, it also blocks a ton of light pollution. But I, if I were you, I would not shoot uh, with S2 during a full moon night. Uh, it's a bit too bright. And then when it comes to the last one, which is the O3 filter, uh, once again, it's a great narrowband filter. The issue is the O3 filter is the weakest of the three, so it will let quite a bit of light pollution through. So if um, you want a, a tip here, try not to image with O3 from home if you have a choice. So what we do usually is we either image from home with all three filters, which is fine, as you can see in some example images here. Uh, those are all taken from home with all three filters. Uh, but what we also do sometimes, since we can drive away from home at some point uh, to the desert, uh, we like to take uh, HA and S2 from home and keep O3 for the desert. So we sometimes spend one full night here uh, with our HA filter, for example, or S2, and we drive away on the next night to the desert and do the O3 filter. We did this for the uh, episode 15, which is Thor's helmet. We imaged HA from home and O3 from the desert. And one more tip about narrowband filters is if you believe you'll be in this hobby for like life pretty much, try to invest in some better filters. So the, the basic ones that usually come with bundles uh, when you buy a camera are uh, I believe 7 nanometers. Right. If you can, try to invest in some 3 nanometer filters, uh, especially for O3 and S2. Uh, 3 nanometer filters will give you much cleaner images with, uh, it will block out much more of the light pollution and the unwanted uh, data in there. So those are very expensive, but if you're going to be in it for life, uh, those are one of the best upgrades you can get. If you have a DSLR camera or a one-shot color camera, getting an all-in-one narrowband filter like the Radian Triad Ultra Filter is a pretty solid move. It'll allow you to capture most nebulae from your home without sacrificing much of the signal. And we've reviewed this in the past and we loved it. And this is actually the filter that I use when I image from home and the desert. Now, if you want to image uh, broadband targets like galaxies uh, and clusters, for example, um, you know, they do make some um, broadband filters, which are just you know, basic light pollution filters. Like for example, the L-Pro. Uh, we tried this one in the past and we did not really like it that much. So the problem with those filters is that they block light. So they also block light coming from your target. So the issue is that when you're processing them, uh, there might be some kind of a natural hue to them, like the color will be uh, really off looking. So we don't really love those filters. Uh, what we tried as well is imaging from home here from the backyard without any filter. And actually it turned out better than when we were using the L-Pro. So, uh, now, uh, if we were to recommend something, would be to just image without any filter, or at least try it and see if your camera can handle it. Um, but at least you will have some really natural colors and you won't have any uh, light from your target being blocked. So uh, as you can see here, we imaged M94 from here. Uh, this is without any filters and it's only one night. And as you can see, it's pretty, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty decent. Good. So, uh, and we also, uh, by curiosity, we imaged the same target again the next night, but this time using an IR, IR cut filter, uh, which is you know, a basic regular filter that you usually often use for pretty much any target. And uh, we noticed that the, uh, the object looked much more faint and much more washed out. So, um, yeah, at this point from, you know, from home, from heavy light pollution, I think imaging a broadband target without any filter is probably the best way to go. Uh, let us know what you think about this in the comments, but uh, we shall investigate further.
Tip number four. So we kind of mentioned this already, but pick the right target. If you plan to capture an emission nebula, it's best to use a narrowband filter when you're imaging from home. If you don't have filters, pick a target that's large and bright. And there's plenty of these, you can find them in the Milky Way Galaxy Band, as well as the Orion constellation in winter. So some bright and large targets include, uh, for example, the Andromeda Galaxy, uh, the Orion Nebula, uh, the Triffid Nebula, kind of, uh, the Lagoon Nebula, uh, the North America Nebula, the Pelican Nebula, so many, anything in Cygnus, uh, there are so many. Tip 5. So this can be applied to pretty much any aspect of astrophotography, and when we think it's worth mentioning, but use a fast telescope. And if you don't have a telescope, use a fast DSLR lens. So a fast uh, lens, like for example f1.4, f1.8, or a fast telescope, which is f5 or under, will help a lot when imaging from home especially because uh, if you're going to do short exposures uh, a fast instrument means that you will be able to get much more data out of each short exposure and when you stack everything together it's going to have a tremendous impact at the end this is another tip that applies to all aspects of astrophotography so you need to make sure that your calibration frames are taken uh, properly. So if you're imaging from home, you will already be dealing with a bunch of unwanted noise. So taking calibration frames, in this case mostly uh, dogs and bios for noise, uh, is really really important. For dark frames, take at least 15 shots. And you'll want to use the same settings and temperature as your lights. Just be sure to keep the cover of your camera or telescope on. And if you have a DSLR camera, uh, you will also want to take some bias frames. And for these, uh, all you have to do is the same as dark frames. Uh, you just have to change one setting, which is the uh, exposure time on the camera, and uh, just try to make uh, the exposure time as fast as your camera would allow. So just take once again 15. That takes like, what, two seconds if you're just you know, holding the shutter. Uh, so it's pretty quick. Um, in this case, flats are obviously important as well in general, but for noise, it's not. So here we are talking about the noise. So and we're focusing on darks and bias, those are to be very, very well done, well taken. We take about 15 of each type nowadays. In the past, we used to take like two to 300, and we're not really sure if that was, you know, worth taking the time. But uh, we've learned over the years that 12 to 15 is the absolute minimum when taking calibration frames. Now, as for dithering, um, you, dithering is really important because you uh, might have unwanted nose as well. I think working nose is uh, the most in, uh, the main issue if you don't dither. So dithering, uh, we usually do uh, dither every three frames. And uh, you can choose a thing between one frame and how many frames you want. I think every one frame is kind of a waste of time. It's a bit overkill. Uh, I think dithering every three frames is uh, the sweet spot to not waste too much time between each because the, the guiding will try to always uh, settle um, but if you do like every five or ten frames might be good as well I think ten frames is a bit too much so dithering every three to five frames I think is a sweet spot for this for our last tip we want to talk about the histogram and what kind of exposure time you'll want to take when imaging from the city so of course your histogram needs to be checked uh, no matter where you image from so you can image from home or the desert uh, you should always check your histogram. But if you don't know how to read the histogram, uh, a quick tip, so you really want your curve, your main uh, light curve, to be about one third uh, from the left in your histogram. This will allow you to uh, really get the best out of your raw frames when you're processing the data. If you take a test shot and your curve is too much to the left, make your image brighter. So for this, you need to either increase your exposure time or widen your uh, aperture or you can also increase your ISO. If your curve is too much to the right, that means you're overexposed. So for this, you have to either uh, lower your ISO or uh, make your F number higher or uh, reduce your exposure time. From home, most people agree that stacking very short exposures is the way to obtain the best results. Which makes sense because uh, if you take long exposures, uh, the light pollution levels will really overexpose your image and you might have like a very very white image so it does make sense 
Now, depending on your camera, this is different though. Um, I mean, we imaged uh, recently, like we said, M94, and we used the QHY 600C, and with this camera, we were able to take long exposures, so five minute exposures, and using those long exposures, we had a, a great result. So this might depend on your camera, and just know that the shorter your exposures, uh, the more diff the more frames you'll have. So you have to stack many, many, like maybe thousands of frames. So try to get uh, you know, long exposures depending on if your histogram looks fine. All right, guys, so that's it. Uh, we really hope you learned something from this video. And if we missed anything important, make sure to let us know in the comments and we will add it to the text version. Yeah, and be sure to share your images in the Galactic Forum. So this is a free forum where you can Share whatever you want and ask any questions. So we'll see you guys next time and clear skies.